morning. So today's press conference promises to be an exciting one, you know, meeting with the youth and other religious leaders. And we have here with us our panelists, our chairman on the Committee on Information and Media Relations, who's also the chairman of the Episcopal Commission on Social Communication of the CBCP, none other than Bishop Milo Hubert Vergara. Yes. We have here with us the Executive Secretary of the Commission on Interreligious Dialogue, Father Carlos Reyes. And the Director of the Philippine Conference on New Evangelization, Father J Jason Laguerta. Yeah. And of course, our Undersecretary for Legislative Policy and Legal Affairs of the Presidential Commission, uh, Communications Operations Office, USEC Jess Yu. And the Director of Public Affairs of the University of Santo Tomas, where the Pope will be on January 18, we have Miss Giovanna Fontanilla. So for our opening statement, let's hear from Bishop Milo Hubert Vergara. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Thank you for coming again for our uh, press conference. Mapansin niyo minamalat po ako. Hindi ko makahingi ng tubig. <laughs> <laughs> Dahil ho ito sa Misa de Gallo at Simbang Gabi. Uh, anyway, um, for our opening statement, I just like to uh, read to you a text message from Bishop Paul Haushan, no, who is a uh, uh, the Bishop of uh, Abra, no? but uh, is also the uh, uh, head or the chairman of the uh, Commission on the Youth no? of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines. Um, I was asking him to come out with a, uh, a message for this press conference to be emailed. However, in his text message, he said... Uh, our internet connection is down, no? Malayo po yung Abra, no? But anyway, nevertheless, um, he, he presented in his text message something beautiful for us to think about, no? As we uh, look forward also to this uh, encounter with the youth in the Royal and Pontifical University of Santo Tomas, no? If I may just uh, quote his words, uh, he wrote here, uh, the Filipino youth are eagerly awaiting meeting with Pope Francis and we see in him our good shepherd caring for his little lambs and a loving father listening to the cries of his children. We experience varied forms of poverty and the Pope's visit gives us hope in God's mercy and compassion. We love you, Holy Father, and we pledge our loyalty and love to you, Mabuhay ang Santo Papa. I think it is uh, in this light that we begin our press conference this afternoon to give some perspectives on uh, the encounter with the youth. And it is our hope that our panelists no, will shed light on some details which you may want to ask no, that uh, will uh, be good information to uh, tell our people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bishop Milo. And uh, the statement from the Executive Secretary of the Commission on Interreligious Dialogue, Father Carlos Reyes. Good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon, Father. So we all know that uh, the meeting at the Royal and Pontifical University of Santo Tomas will begin with a meeting with the religious leaders and uh, we have uh, 10 religious leaders who will uh, be there in this meeting with Pope Francis and uh, the, the CBCP Episcopal Commission for Interreligious Dialogue is uh, really very happy that the Pope himself has desired this meeting with the religious leaders to show that uh, really the church is Catholic which means it is universal and uh, we are in dialogue with everybody. We are in dialogue with the world as uh, mandated by the Second Vatican Council in uh, Lumen Gentium, especially the pastoral constitution also, Gaudium et Spes. So, meron po tayong mga sampung, uh, sampung uh, leader 
ng iba't ibang reliyon. Hindi lang po mga leader, meron din tayong mga resource persons, no? At uh, sila po ay uh, pwede, na, pwede na naming ibigay yung pangalan, no? Official na po ito. Uh, His Eminence, Nectarius Chilis, the Metropolitan of Hong Kong and Southeast Asia. He belongs to the Ecumenical Orthodox Church of uh, the Patriarch Bartholomew, His Holiness, Patriarch Bartholomew. And recently, we, uh, we are aware that uh, there was a visit by the Pope in Turkey and uh, the two leaders met in a fraternal embrace. The other religious leader is the Venerable Master Xing Yun, of the Foguang Shan Monastery, a uh, Buddhist uh, monk in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. He is the supreme head of the Mahayana denomination of Buddhism called the Buddhist Light International Association. And the BLIA has an international outlook and they engage in cultural and educational activities. They are broad-minded and respectful of culture and society. And they have been a long-time partner of the CBCP in interreligious dialogue. And last, uh, last October, the 2014 celebration of Re Assisi Revisited was held for the first time, I think, in a Buddhist temple, their Buddhist temple in Ermita. And the third religious leader would be Rabbi Eliyahu Asaria. Rabbi Eliyahu is a native of Chicago. He is the head of the Jewish synagogue in Makati City. They hold Shepardic services in the synagogue and uh, they also help you know, the victims of Typhoon Yolanda. Hindi lang mo masyadong uh, high key, no? medyo low key rin sila. Another religious leader, a long time partner also, is the Maharaj Rajesh Sharma of Hinduism. He was invited to be one of the speakers during the PCNE that was held for the first time uh, in UST and he spoke about unconditional forgiveness. And also we have our partners with the NCCP, National Council of Churches in the Philippines, is the chairman, His Excellency Ephraim S. Fautagana. He is the Obispo Maximo of the Philippine Independent Church and concurrently the chairman of the National Council of Churches in the Philippines. Also, we have with us Bishop Cesar Vicente Punsalan of the Philippine Evangelical Church. He is an old hand in interfaith gatherings. I've been working with him for almost 10 years now. And uh, they really are very open. And in fact, this coming February, we're going to have, have a, a follow-up. No? meeting wherein he is going to bring in his pastors and bishops probably here in uh, San Agustin Church so that we may uh, explain to them um, our church and our history. No? So, papaliwanag din natin sa mga ubispo niya sa, sa mga pastor nila yung Vatican II saka kung bakit ganito ang simbahan, ang itsura ng simbahan ng simbahan katolika. Uh, another one, he's not a really a religious leader, but he's an, a member of the academe, is uh, Dean Julkipli Wadi of Islam. No? He's the Dean of the Islamic Institute of Islamic Studies of the University of the Philippines. And he's our resource person, a very good friend of mine. He's a long time partner in interreligious dialogue. He's a member of the academe. And one time he. Uh, during an interview, he interviewed me over UP radio, DCUP. He said that uh, the Philippines can be a model also for peace in the Middle East. So he wants peace with Israel. Sabi niya, no? we can be uh, agents also of peace for Israel. He's really a man of peace and one partner for interreligious dialogue. And then another one is uh, Imam Ebra Moksir. He is the president of the Imam Council of the Philippines and a chaplain of the Philippine National Police. And he holds the rank of, uh, well, it's Lieutenant Colonel. He is a longtime partner in interreligious dialogue and a man of peace. One time during a radio interview over DCWM, 
He said that Christians and Muslims must forgive one another without conditions. Sabi niya, magpatawar na lang tayo. It's actually the first time I heard that from uh, uh, from Ima Moksir, no? So, magpatawaran na tayo. And it's really something there should be forgiving and there should be also mercy and compassion applied and given to each and every one of us. So, another resource person that we have is our very own Dean Lillian Sison of the University of Santo Tomas. And Dean, Lil Dean Lillian Sison has his advocacy of interfaith dialogue and she is a member of the Religions for Peace Philippines. She was a former dean of the UST Graduate School and very much dedicated to interreligious dialogue. Recently, uh, in an interfaith, uh, let's say, ambiance, she organized a psychotraumatic counseling project in a town hit by Yolanda in Leyte. And the funding came from the Religions for Peace Asia. She is an untireable, indefatigable Catholic apostle of peace and harmony, and also very much part of our uh, pool of resource persons in interfaith dialogue. And of course, uh, we have Chief Justice Reynato Puno. He's uh, president and chairman of the board of the Philippine Bible Society. He was recommended by Bishop Ambo David to be part of uh, this gathering. And uh, we know that the Bible is the source of unity among Christians. And there's uh, long been a uh, collaboration between the National Council of Churches in the Philippines and, uh, and the Catholic Church in the Philippines through the Philippine Bible Society. So ito po yung sampu natin na mga religious leaders na uh, makikipagtagpo Kay Pope Francis. Thank you very much, uh, Father Caloy Reyes. So, what about the youth? Now, what's in store for the youth uh, when the Pope meets with them in UST on January 18? Let's hear from the Director of the Public Affairs Office of uh, the University of Santo Tomas, no other than Miss Giovanna Fontanilla. Magandang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. At uh, maligayang Pasko. Ang University of Santo Tomas po ay kaisa ng ating mahal na Santo Papa Pope Francis at ng simbahan sa pagdiriwang ng Pasko at pagdiriwang ng pagmamalasakit. This afternoon, please allow me to read the press statement of Reverend Father Herminio V. Dagohoy O.P., Rector of the University of Santo Tomas, regarding the encounter of Pope Francis with the young people at USG. The nation is truly overjoyed with the news of the visit of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, this coming January 15 to 18, 2015. This becomes even more significant since it is his first visit to the Philippines and the University of Santo Tomas, the Pontifical, Royal, and Catholic University of the Philippines. The university feels extremely blessed and honored that the Holy Father will have the encounter with the young people on the 18th of January at UST. This momentous sojourn of Pope Francis is meaningful to the Filipino youth as they are constantly in search of someone worthy to look up to and to emulate, someone who understands them and expresses authentic love. Pope Francis appeals to the youth because they see Jesus in him. They see a man of God who is simple and sincere as a bearer of the good news. When Pope Francis interacts with the young people at UST, using the language of mercy and compassion and with joy in spreading God's love to them, the young people in turn with grateful hearts are inspired to a renewed life offered to the service of the Lord and others. The papal event at UST is open to the public 
at designated areas in the campus. However, the UST football field and grandstand are allotted only for the youth representatives coming from the Archdiocese and Commission on the Youth, AYC, Episcopal Commission on the Youth, ECY, Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines, and Association of Catholic Universities of the Philippines member schools, and the youth participants of the second Philippine Conference on New Evangelization. We are glad to share with you that the UST Committee for the Papal Visit to the University ensures that all preparations for Pope Francis' encounter with the youth at UST are in order to meet the goals and the corresponding activities for this very important event to be a success. We enjoin the Filipino people to pray and prepare themselves for the encounter with Pope Francis at UST and to be alert on advisories, guidelines, and more details that we will be releasing in due time. We invite all of you to extend a warm and vigorous welcome to our Pope. Let us all work and act together to make the visit of Pope Francis not only a tremendous success, but more importantly, a time of hope, grace, and love for the Filipino people and our beloved country. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fontanilla. Side by side, parallel to the official event that will take place in UST, is the Philippine Conference on New Evangelization, the aim of which is to provide the spiritual, missionary, and pastoral dimension of the Pope's visit. For more details, let's hear from no other than the director of the Philippine Conference on New Evangelization, Father Jason Laguerta. Yeah, good afternoon. On January 15 to 17, 2014, UST will um, again host for us the second plenary, or rather the second um, Philippine Conference on New Evangelization. It is a three-day conference uh, organized by the Archdiocese of Manila, headed by His Eminence uh, Cardinal Tagle. And the theme is Blessed Are You, which is taken from Matthew 5, verse 1 to 12, a reflection on the, a reflection on the Beatitudes. And we know that evangelization, new evangelization, is one of the thrusts of the Holy Father, Pope Francis. So this three-day conference is... Uh, a parallel activity on the papal visit to enhance the message of uh, the Pope. So we are gathering um, at least 5,000 participants in order to reflect on the message of Pope Francis as well as on uh, to carve ways by which we can evangelize our society today, our Philippine society. So this uh, Philippine Conference on New Evangelization is our humble uh, effort to uh, promote, promote and propose the gospel to uh, the Filipinos of today. Thank you very much, uh, Father Laguerta. Now, since this is also a state visit, no? let's hear from the Undersecretary for Legislative Policy and Legal Affairs of the Presidential Communications Operations Office, Yusek Jess Yu. Good afternoon, friends. Pope Francis will be arriving in the Philippines in 24 days. Accordingly, the government and the church are now ironing out the final stages of preparations for the visit of His Holiness. The visit of Pope Francis to the University of Santa Tomas will be an opportunity for the youth to have an encounter with His Holiness. UST will also be the venue where the faithful of other religions can meet Pope Francis. As a predominantly Catholic nation, we appeal to the faithful to help all of us to ensure that the visit of His Holiness Pope Francis will be a peaceful, secured, and orderly event. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yusek Yu. We also have with, here with us a youth representative. No, ano kaya ang impact ng pagbisita ng Papa sa youth? No, ano bang expectations nila? We have here with us no other than Mr. Richard Pasco Gin. You know. 
Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. I am representing the Commissioner of the Archdiocesan Commission and you, Reverend Father Jade Likwanan. Uh, even as we do not know yet the, even as we did not know yet the exact details of the papal visit last year, uh, this year, we have started already with our formation programs early on to prepare our young people for this. Uh, visit of the Holy Father. We would like to see to it that this would not just be one event that would happen, but something that would really be experienced by the young people. So our objective for this monthly formation programs was not just to prepare the young people for the visit of the Holy Father, but to lead them into a meaningful experience of communion with uh, young people from other places in the country, as well as a deeper communion with uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Likewise, we are hoping that just as the visit of John Paul II in 1995 produced so many vocations to the priesthood and the religious life, we are praying that this visit of the Holy Father in January would also enliven the spirit of a service among young people uh, that would somewhat um, make them think of the possibility that they are being called to serve the church, particularly through, um, through this uh, uh, priestly and religious vocation. Uh, when the details for the, the papal visit have become uh, uh, revealed. Uh, we are fortunate that the young people of the Archdiocese of Manila have been tapped by the committee of the University of Santo Tomas to participate in the event. So right now there are young people from various parishes of the, Arch uh, uh, the Archdiocese that will be directly participating in the encounter with the youth as animators, as members of the choir, etc. So we are all excited to encounter the Holy Father and we are all praying that this visit of the Holy Father in the Philippines will once again, uh, will once again awaken the, the spirit of service and commitment to the church among our young people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard uh, Pascogin. And so now we're excited to hear your questions. The floor is now open to your questions, but kindly please mention your name and the network that you represent. The floor is now open to your questions. Who would like to ask the first question? Uh, to uh, Ms. Fontanilla, I'm Sandra Aguinaldo, GMA7. But what will be the system? Because for sure, uh, a lot of uh, people would like to uh, see him, to get close to him. And uh, you said that um, the event is open to the public at designated areas. Can we get uh, more details of that? And what will be the system? Thank you very much, Sandra. And uh, Merry Christmas. So, um, as, we, as I mentioned in the earlier, the football field and the grandstand will only be allotted for the young people that will form part of the encounter with the Holy Father. However, the, we also want to open it to the public. I mean, a lot of people that are really more than excited to see the Holy Father and to receive blessings from, from him. So um, there are certain, we, we couldn't reveal the details because of security concerns. No? However, we would say that there are certain gates that will be allotted for this uh, people to enter the university. No? And um, there are areas also where they can stay so that they will have a glimpse of the Holy Father. Now, uh, may I repeat, because there's been a lot of inquiries, there are no tickets being distributed by the University of Santo Tomas to people that will join us uh, when the Holy Father visits UST. So we really like to make that clear. There's a lot of inquiry, where do they get tickets, how are they distributed? I say it again, there are no tickets for the public. They just come to the university, yeah. because it is one rare opportunity for them to uh, see the Holy Father. So we would like to provide them with that wonderful opportunity of um, seeing him. Thank you. Who has the next question? Yes. State your name and the network you represent. Thank you. I'm Joel Ginto from AFP. To Father AS, sir, uh, what message uh, do we expect to hear from the Pope when he meets with uh, the religious leaders and what's the significance of the Pope meeting the leaders of different faiths uh, given the context of the rise of uh, ISIS, especially in the Philippines? 
Well, as for the message that the Pope will give to the religious leaders, it is my understanding that uh, the Pope, there is no program in that meeting. It's going to be a 10, maybe 15 minute uh, meeting. So the Pope will uh, greet the religious leaders, and we know the Pope. No? I don't know what's going to transpire. I don't know what's co what message is going to tell them. It's probably uh, getting to know you. Oh, kamusta na po? Merry Christmas. Hindi ko na tapos na yung Pasko noon. Pero ano, kamusta na po? Ako si Pope Francis. Siguro ganun lang po ang mangyayari, no? And as to the significance, well, uh, Pope Francis said uh, on the way back, no, from Turkey, that... Uh, Sabi niya yung ISIS daw, yung mga ano. Uh, lahat ng religion, meron yan eh. No? Meron naman lahat ng religion yan, no? Uh, it is our job, yung as uh, men and women of religion, not to allow the fundamentalists, as I say, or the extremists to hijack the religion. So the message is going to be message of mercy and compassion. And also, uh, the significance of this is uh, one discovery of the Second Vatican Council. Somehow we have discovered that the One Church of Christ subsists in the Catholic Church. Nakalagay po yung sa Lumen Gentium. Ano yung sabihin nun? Sabi ng simbahan that there are also elements of sanctification, elements of truth, no? outside the visible juridical borders of the Roman Catholic Church. At dahil doon, na naiba rin po yung ating uh, pastoral, no? It became a pastoral of dialogue. And if we're going to sum up Vatican II in one word, I'm going to say it's one word dialogue. So, Gaudium et Spes, the pastoral constitution of the church in the modern world opens up with uh, the joys and the hopes of the men and women of this world are also the joys and the hopes of the Christians. We are in the same boat. And we want to share our message of joy, our joy in our Lord Jesus Christ, with men and women of other religions, and also with men and women who are still looking for the face of God. No? At dapat po sana makita nila sa, sa atin, mga Kristiyano, ay ang mukha ni Jesus na totoong maawain, as sabi nga, mercy and compassion, no? misericordia, saka yung sa tawag na compassion, eh, parang two words yun sa Latin, eh, kumpatire, to suffer with. And this is a message of our Pope, that uh, he is there with us, and the Catholic Church is here also for, for this purpose. And we want to extend this message to everybody. Uh, I'm Angeli Cantillana from the Varsitarian of UST. Uh, my question is for Ma'am Fontanilla and Sir Paz Gogin. Uh, in a previous interview with uh, Bishop Paul Haushan, nasabi po niya na there would be three youth representatives that will have the chance to talk, or the, to ask questions kay Pope Francis. Uh, one coming from a poor family, a victim of Yoland, uh, a victim of Typhoon Yoland, and rehabilitation volunteer. So, napangalan na na po ba yung tatlo? May, mayroon alam na po ba na natin kung sino yung tatlo. Thank you for that question. There are three young people that will share testimonies in the presence of Pope Francis. No? Uh, these are their qualifications. The first one is a college student. The second one is an out-of-school youth representing also the poor sector. And then the third one is a Yolanda Typhoon Relief Volunteer. No? Um, as of the moment, uh, we cannot still give the names, but these are the three descriptions of those young people. Follow-up for the interreligious sure. meeting. Uh, meron na po bang exact venue for that meeting, like specific building in USD? Uh, well, Bishop, I'll give... Yes, there is already a... A specific area for uh, the well, the meeting of the Holy Father with the leaders of different religions. No, that will be somewhere in the arch of the centuries of the okay. university. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. What about the gentleman in blue? 
Hi, my name's Dave DiCasper from Nine News. Ano? It's for Miss Giovanna. As a ating meeting po with leaders, wala po tayong fixed program. Ano? So parang kubaga discussion na po siya, ano, Father. Sa ating meeting with the youth, meron ho ba tayong fixed program and how that go about? Kasi if I'm not mistaken, from 10.30 a.m. ang meeting with the youth, dire-diretso na po siya ng 3 o'clock bago ang misa sa Rizal Park. Ano? So what will transpire? from 10 to 3 o'clock. Thank you very much for your question. First of all, we have at 6.30 in the morning what we call pre-program. No? Actually, the program director is also here, no? Professor Tonton Africa. But anyway, let me give you the details. No? So, parang mag-walk through tayo ng mangyayari sa UST. So, 6.30 in the morning, pre-program muna yon. So, this is a way of preparing the young people who will have an encounter with Pope Francis at around 10.30 in the morning. No? So, yung pre-program will be, say, uh, praying the rosary, meron ding practice of songs when the Holy Father arrives, cheers for the Holy Father, and then there are some um, sharing also of their faith. No? And then finally, that will lead to praise and worship until the Holy Father comes. No? Now, when the Holy Father comes, there, there's going to be the enthronement, the enthronement of the cross, and then this is a liturgy, so there will be a reading, responsorial psalm, the testimonies of the, the gospel, and then the testimonies of the three young people that I mentioned earlier, out of school youth, a college student, and the Yolanda, well, the Typhoon Yolanda Relief Volunteer. No? After that, Pope Francis, our beloved Holy Father, will deliver a message to the young people. And then there will be the prayers, intercessions, that will be given by seven um, youth representatives coming from um, different parts of our uh, country. No? So they will be speaking in different dialects. No? And then there will be Our Father, the praying of the Our Father, the closing prayer, and um, this, I think, is something that is very interesting for all of us and also a grace-filled moment. The Holy Father will lead the praying of the Angelus at the UST Grandstand. And then, after the praying of the Angelus, he leaves the university. So, hindi po siya hanggang alas tres sa UST. Pagkatapos po ng Angelus, Aalis na po siya. So more or less that's 12 or between 12 and 12.30. So we hope that we have given you a, a clearer scenario of what to expect during that encounter of the young people with Pope Francis. Thanks, Dave, for the question. Who has the next question? Yes, ma'am. For Miss Fantanilia po, I'm Nes Kayabiab from Bombo Radio. Ma'am, with less than a month na lang po bago yung PayPal visit, paano pa po nag-ahanda yung UST? I mean, uh, uh, may ilang pagkakaiba po ba kumpara sa mga naunang Pope visit sa Philippines po? Thank you. Salamat sa iyong katanungan, no? Uh, sinabi ko na nga kanina na sa, at, sa, well, in the university, practically all the preparations are, uh, with God's grace, seeming to be in place. No? And then, I'm glad to share with you na yung mga members ng aming committee ay kasama ko rin po dito. No? The one in charge for security, the one in charge for physical arrangement, the one in charge for student volunteers for the program, and the members of the Office of Public Affairs for media. No? Ms. Perez, Dr. Sonko, Professor Olaso, Dr. Uh, uh, Sir Africa, and the people of the public affairs. In other words, I assure you that the preparations are, um, you know, are in place, meaning that we are working hard, perspiring, praying hard for inspiration, and I guess God will do the rest. So I assure you that things are in place at uh, UST. It's always with that same commitment that we prepare for the coming of the Holy Father, just like in the previous visits of the other popes. That's very reassuring. Who has the next question? Okay. 
Yes, ma'am. Can you pass the microphone, please? I'm NJ Vland, and I'm covering for National Catholic Reporter in Kansas City. So I want to ask Father Laguerta about a Philippine conference on the new evangelization. I want to know why you are having this at this time when the Pope is here. Are you having it uh, uh, simultaneously on that day, right? Yeah, we're and what's it going to happen? On, uh, How January is it? 15 to 17. So ah, the seventeen. The so they 15th. will mer are, are your are your participants going to be also joining up at UST with uh, in our uh, uh, program? There there is no guarantee that uh, the participants are there, but mm -hmm. th there is a big possibility that they are part of the audience of the uh, mm -hmm. people encountered in UST. So is it going to have the same format as the first one? That kind of Yes, almost similar, but uh, now we have trimmed it a little because of uh, some security concerns. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Um, kay Ms. Fontanilla po. Beverly po sa TV5. How many participants are we expecting? May breakdown po ba? How many will be from UST, SEAP, ECY? And um, ilan po yung ina-allot natin na for public? Baka po yung iba pwedeng, ano, hindi na sila makapasok dun sa area. May expectation po ba? Yeah. Thank you very much. I guess that's a question that is often asked of us, no? So, for the, for the young people, the youth representatives, we have allotted actually approximately 24,000. So young people will be 24,000. And then I guess for the public that are really more than um, excited to see the Holy Father, perhaps the number would be even more. But you know, it, it's not easy to really give you the figure. So uh, more or less, that's how we will see it. 24,000 young people, and then the public that will be accommodated will be even more than that number. Sure. Thank you. Ma'am, may ano po ba, the bulk will be coming from UST or pare-pareho lang po yung allotted from UST, SEAP, etc.? Napakaganda ng katanungan yan, no? I guess this is already the opportunity for the University of Santo Tomas to share with you that concept also of um, compassion. Huh? May we, may, uh, yes, no, that concept of compassion. Ang encounter po, the encounter of the Holy Father with the youth at UST will practically open the doors of the university to young people from all over the Philippines. So, ang proportion po nun, eh, actually, the same lang, no? Even if it is done at the University of Santo Tomas, we have uh, really, well, of course, we work closely with the Central Committee, no? And uh, we are uh, receiving young people from all over the country, from different universities, different colleges, different dioceses. So um, it's proportionate, huh? opening up. So it's not just UST students. Okay. It's even a lot more of other students and young people than UST students. Okay. Thank we you. have time for two more questions. Uh, a question there from the gentleman in green. Then after him, sir, it will be your turn. Yes, I'm, I'm Ryan Chua from ABS-CBN. Um, I think you think you can answer this, sir. What are the security arrangements for that very big event? Yeah, the government is, will be also assisting the UST in providing uh, security uh, for, for the area. Again, uh, we cannot divulge uh, specific details, but uh, the government is in close coordination uh, with UST uh, regarding the security concerns uh, for the university. Yes, sir. Good morning. Po. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I'm Mr. Chor from the Bloggers Association of the Philippines. Uh, the personal security man of the Pope has sometimes encountered nightmares when it comes to implementing security measures. Have you seen some of these loopholes that, you know, sometimes the Pope tends to do the unexpected? What are your measures or your uh, security measure on this one? 
Yes, uh, for the government, we have uh, reviewed the, the videos of uh, the Pope Francis's visit in other countries. So we have also been in coordination with uh, the Swiss Guards and the Vatican uh, regarding this. And the PSG, the PNP, including the AFP, have discussed uh, these measures. And we are taking into consideration uh, the suddenness of the Pope in the going down from the Pope Mobile, etc. So we have also considered these matters. So thank you very much for your time, your attention, your participation. The next press conference will be on December 29, same place, same time. And the topic would be the visit of Pope Francis in Malacanang.